Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are happy to welcome Dr. Gregory Brannan, a North Carolina-based OBGYN and medical director with an acute focus on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Welcome. Thank you, Phil. So, uh, what was your first introduction to BHRT? Well, as trained as an OBGYN for the last 30 years, I've always had a passion with hormones, female hormones. And we're trained as an OB that synthetic or bioidentical turn on the same lock and key mechanism. But about 15 years ago, I just asked myself questions. If I want the exact lock and key to work properly, why not use the exact molecule, atom for atom, structure for structure, so you have the same response possible? So I got into bioidentical about 12, 15 years ago. And with uh, the Women's Health Initiative study in 2002, there was a lot of confusion about uh, side effects, right? That's the whole thing about it. The 2002 studies were interesting to me. Put to the side that it is CCE and progestin. Put that to the side. We had literature for 30, 40 years that actually hormone therapy was actually beneficial for dementia, for cardiovascular disease, and suddenly, boom, 2002 happened. It's all bad. So that first paper, just my, my intuition was that had to be a bad paper. Now, we've known in the last 15, 16 years when other studies came out, it is bad. First off is the placebo side and the treatise side with 13 years in difference. We know half the population of that study dropped out. So now we know the science back, but my first initiative was how could this be bad? But that actually opened my eyes and intrigued me saying, okay, we know there are some benefits with estrogen and progesterone, not CCE and progestin. So if we can get the benefits without the side effects, why not go back to the bioidentical structure? As Mayo Clinic states, a bioidentical structure means recognized as same. So that was the whole process was actually that opened my eyes saying, Okay, if there are side effects, let's look what they are, but go for the most structure that's identical to our body produces. So you live this every day. What are some of the misconceptions you hear about hormone replacement therapy? Phil, hormones cause cancer. Phil, hormones cause cardiovascular disease and blood clots. It's just the opposite. Let's go over men first. The famous paper that everybody quotes that hormones, testosterone therapy causes a prostate cancer to spread was written in 1941 by Dr. Huggins, and in this study he had one man who already was castrated and therefore gave synthetic testosterone and it spread. Dr. Morgenthau at Harvard wrote a great paper called, a book called Testosterone for Life. They reviewed that paper, had multiple studies shown it's just the opposite. Men who have higher testosterone have less prostate cancer, and in his study, he showed men that had prostate cancer did better on testosterone therapy, bioidentical, than not treatment at all. Also, he also showed cardiovascular disease. The higher one's testosterone, less cost of cardiovascular disease. The larger series done with, was that done to VA. It showed men who were over 540 of testosterone, nanograms per deciliter, versus men under 350. The men under 350 had a 80% higher chance of a heart attack in the next four and a half years. Complete misconception. Just think about it common wise. You want an 18 year old chemistry or a 70 year old chemistry? Right. And the next one for women. Hormones cause breast cancer. Well, let's review this. Even the WHI study, after the last 15 years I looked at it, even in that study, in both cohorts, the placebo group, regardless if they started at the age of 50 or 63, there was less cause of, of death of all mortality. It's very frustrating to hear these kind of fallacies because we have supplementation, replenishment of hormones that actually can enhance life, enhance the quality of life, enhance the longevity of life, are being the bad guys. It's just the opposite of that. Again, youthful chemistry is without paramount the way we want to proceed with longevity. Let's talk a little bit about uh, compounding the uh, BHRT specific to your patient population. And it's not always just you know, the sex, sex hormones. There's uh, cortisol and thyroid and such. So talk a little bit about the importance of, of working with a good compounding pharmacy. Yeah, I do that. My passion is pellets. I look back, the very first paper on hormonal replacement therapy was in 1935, actually in Germany that their first patient in this study was a woman who had a hysterectomy and both a bilateral salpingophorectomy. And she was treated with pellets. And the key thing is you want to mimic what your body makes, not just the same structure, but how it's released, 
how it's eliminated, and how it's used. And you look at the pharmacokinetics of a pellet, it's most consistent than it is, um, say, a, an injection where you have the half-life of being shorter. So I'm passionate on pellets because of the, e the ease of uh, the application. It is, it is a procedure, but in a, you know, a one, two minutes already done, and it's there as a depot. It's a steady state. It's a constant reserve. So I focused on that. Orally, do I use natural compounded progesterone? And you talk about the compounding partner, it's crucial. Because the compounding is, you know that the actual molecule is what you're getting. You know it's released. You can work with a sustained release with cellulose, so you get the same constant release uh, aspect of it. So I do believe having a relationship with a pharmaceutical company, a compound one is crucial, because every treatment you do is individualized and personalized for your patient. One size does not fit all. Right, this is not an off the shelf. No, that's what's important. That's why your algorithm for your dosing model is crucial on the body's size, symptoms, where they're at hormonally, where they're at in their age, how things change. But I'm not a range person. I don't want a normal range. That drives me insane. Why, and, and you look back at the data for testosterone, 30 years ago, a male's testosterone was 800 to 1200. Now it's 17700. We should ask why are we going down, not that this is a normal range. And what's the sequelae of not being optimized? Right. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that, that your patients come to you and, and are complaining about. Beautiful. Well, optimal bio, I do, but we're about half male, half female. Uh, the biggest, the number one thing is tired of being tired. Uh, number two is brain fog. Um, libido and that kind of stuff, it's like three and four, but basically it's just the quality of life. Not getting good sleep, not waking up refreshed not having the same mojo they had. So they just, the brain fog and tiredness is the one that got me going the most. Mm -hmm. And what about weight gain? Weight gain is again, a sequelae of having your hormones out of balance. It's always the belly fat part about it. So my passion, Optimal Bio, we also talk a lot of time about uh, wellness and about nutrition and why it's so important with caloric restriction, intermittent fasting, what type of foods you eat. But that's actually accentuated by the right hormonal balance. We know testosterone actually helps you know, burn fat, helps utilize insulin properly. So that's why they are intertwined together synergistically. And the key we've talked about is thyroid, is thyroid, hypothyroidism, with iodine, selenium, magnesium, zinc, and tyrosine. What I try to explain to patients is the thyroid is like the RPM. You put your car on, it's revving. Every cell needs T3. Then the power, when you step on the gas, the torque, is your testosterone, your estrogen, and progesterone. And they work synergistically. Right, yeah, and, and it's a symphony, as, as Pam Smith says. I think really what happened was, in the mid-1920s, 1930s, when we found penicillin, and scientists found a, a target, the bacteria, and they have the weapon, the penicillin, so one thing turned one thing. Our body's so much more complex than that. The Genome Project, we have 23,000 genes. As an example, iodine um, affects every cell. We have a sodium iodine system. Vitamin D affects 3,000 genes of the 23,000 genes. It isn't plug in one thing does one. When you take that, that key and you put it in the lock, it, a multitude of things happen. Like the word you use, the word symphony, that's exactly what happens. Our body is so smart. If it's given the right supplements, the right nutraceuticals, the right foods, and right nutrition, these substrates, it knows what to do with it. The problem our body is so amazing is when it doesn't have those, it can adapt so we could survive but we're meant to thrive. That's why it's important to have the right nutrition, the right uh, uh, hormonal balance, because then we could actually, I don't, I don't think longevity should be counter-current to uh, health. The health span and longevity can go together. Right, right. And it, it's just scientifically proven that for men and women, uh, our hormones decline uh, over age. With women, it tends to be a more precipitous decline with uh, uh, menopause, but men are losing what percentage every year on average? Oh yeah, you can look at a man who's 70 years of age, has lost over 50% of a 25 year old. But more importantly than that, well, that was Travis and studies showed that we're losing um, per age, but we're also starting earlier. And this is what I want to spend time on. In our bodies, testosterone, both men and women, testosterone converts to estradiol, aromatase. But it's the estrogen that goes back to the brain to turn off the production of testosterone in both men and women. The xenoestrogens, that's the problem the last 50 years. The insecticides, the pesticides, the, um, the, the dioxin, the BPAs, the phthalates, the plasticizer, the isoflavins, all those mimic our natural estrogens. So our body has less than we used to have. So we start with a less normal range. 
That's not optimal. You look back at our, our, our great grandparents in the 20s and 30s, they were having, we didn't have the chronic diseases of diabetes, dementias. They were not there at the volume we have because our body's been, was hammered the last 40, 50 years. So when you talk about what ranges, yes, we do lose over time, but we're starting with a, early, with a less in the bank account. And that's the problem. In fact, in our practice, probably 25% of our practice is men and women under the age of 35. Um, it is hitting these, we're having men and women having the same symptoms in, in my age, you know, 55 and older, those symptoms are having 20, 30 years older. That's why it's important. And you have doctors that, that won't even think about testing these values. It can't happen to you. Right. But that's why I go back to what we were 30, 50 years ago. We are four times higher than we are today. That's why we have the Prozacs, the Viagras, the belly fat, the metabolic syndrome, because we're starting, our body's just getting destroyed out there. So you're here at the uh, A4M conference in LA and there's a, a, a BHRT uh, symposium. Uh, are you enrolled in that? Oh yes, sir, I'm taking that this, this, this conference. Okay, uh, you've been studying bioidentical hormone replacement therapy for years. Years, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, our third book comes out in about three weeks called The Hormone Handbook. Learning is crucial. So I go to as many symposiums and conferences as I can. I do every module possible. I want to keep reading and I want to intertwine gut health, neurogenic diseases, endocrinology, cardiology. It all goes together. So I never stop learning. I think if we stop learning, we're, we're dead, right? So I'm here to freshen up a lot of things I know. The estrogen metabolism is crucial, testosterone deficiency. That's what our business is. But it's so important to know out, who out there is studying and reading something, you're going to pick up other things to help your patients, help yourself. Let's talk about your book. What are you hoping to impart? Uh, to the reader with the hormone handbook. The hormone handbook is, the end of it is all testimonials. That was important to me. The beginning, this is it, the science. It's the science that led me to this whole um, illumination of where we're supposed to be. The science, when we're outside the box, you know, I'm trained allopathic with the MD, and we always look for scientific facts. And you look at some of these studies, like the WHI study, we started de detailing it, the study was terrible. It wasn't proposed properly, the outcome was done before the, the conclusion was even come to. So what you hear about when you talk about functional medicine or, or, or alternative medicine, it's, oh my gosh, that's not real medicine. No, it's just the opposite. Biochemistry is biochemistry. Our knowledge of that is increasing at a phenomenal rate because we're going back to the basics, asking questions, why were our grandparents not this way? We died 100 years ago of dirty water and trauma. Mm -hmm. We didn't die of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, Alzheimer's. But now you have cardiovascular disease, you have cancer, you have neurogenic disease, and just simply falling down is the fourth cause of death over the age of 70. So these questions can be answered if we understand the biochemistry. So yes, why I come? I never want to miss another great doctor who's done some more research to find more it, for issues to have, increase my knowledge. What advice would you have for the practitioner tuning in today and, and perhaps they haven't uh, really delved into uh, anti-aging, but they're, they're curious, they've heard about uh, it from patients perhaps. Um, you know, what, what, what advice could you give them in terms of getting started? Go back to their reason why they got involved in medicine in the first place, to help others. Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. That's our first thing. Don't poo-poo the knowledge and science we learned in an allopathic way. That was invaluable to understand how the body works, the science. There's, there's studies, they're, they're there, the knowledge is there. But take it and always ask, why? Why do we give this? Why do we give that? We know the drug of choice of carrying the American board from, from menopause women is Zoloft's, the SSRIs. Why? It masks effects. Let's go to the root cause. But for our practitioners, we're humans, we're, uh, the, only, the only study we have is life, right? The end result is how our quality and quantity of life. We have a, an N of one, right? That's, that's what we are. You cannot, you cannot have us clone ourselves and have five, you know, 10 different people out there have variables. So we have to use the best we can and understand that a lot of our pharmaceuticals, as long as, long as a lot are, uh, came from food sources and plant sources, so use the question, ask why, don't throw your science away, but we have to look at the individual and understand that one, there's not a poly pill out there, there just isn't. And we have to understand the science. And I really believe 
The genome was great, but the future of epigenetics showing how the phenotype is related to the genetics and there's variables to that, that's our future. But you can look at coenzyme Q10, you can look at vitamin D, you can look at Resifol, um, you can look at all these things and how they work, it gets down to the cellular level. So to me, the cellular level is the answer. Right. Well, I can tell you have a passion for this type of medicine. It, it's wonderful. I've been honored to deliver about 12, 13,000 babies. Um, I just love from that moment I see that little, that little heartbeat to the, I see this woman. Now I'm delivering women that I delivered. Um, but I just came by a doctor who says, you know, it's, this is no part of aging. There isn't. There's sequelae to that. So I want to see them be as vibrant when they're 12 as when they're 82 and enjoy life in between there. It's a bouquet. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Phil, thanks for the honor.